people with trigger points. And I wanted to talk about trigger points because I think it could be a frustrating problem. <clears throat> so uh, let's, uh, the presentation is usually going to be pain, numbness or tingling, shooting discomfort, uh, difficulty with movement, or just difficulty with sensation. Uh, and when it gets to the face, everybody always worries about a stroke. When there's paralysis or weakness, that's a little different. That's not a trigger point anymore, usually. In most cases, trigger points are just to the dermatome or the area of the body where big root nerves innervate. So the way it works is that along the backbone of anybody, you have 22 vertebral bodies. And the vertebral bodies make up this axial skeleton that every other bone in the body is based on. Good axis and good muscles around that, and you can walk. If this is all sloppy or broken, you'll be painful, you can't walk. So you have to have a good structure back here. And these 22 bones are varying sizes. The biggest ones are at the low back, and then it gets a little bit thinner, and then it's super thin up here. There's a couple here at the tailbone, but they're not as important. So this is an example of what is supposed to be a backbone. So you see the backbone's spinous process. That's what, this is what it looks like, like this. So obviously this is not to scale, but you see the spinous processes back here. You see these little uh, things coming off the side. And, and these, the, uh, these are probably going to be around the thorax. I'm just judging from the way these things look. Uh, and then there's the bone or the body itself, the vertebral body itself. Then there are these things here called discs. And each of these bones is separate. You can move a little bit. It gives you mobility so you can go back and forth. Uh, you can't really bend this, but you can arch your back or you can bend forward. It gives you mobility. But at the same time, the problem is when you have too much mobility, you can actually uh, pinch one of these little nerve roots. This is a nerve root right here. When you pinch a nerve root, uh, it usually, the nerves are very, very delicate. They don't like to be pinched. So you can pinch them between these two bones. You can pinch them if you have a lot of arthritis, like this little leading edge, that's arthritic. You can also pinch if you push out a disc. And this here is a disc. It's colored red. And that's uh, supposed to be a bulging or herniated disc. And when a disc pushes out, it's because these this disc is supposed to be a tight bunch of fibers like this that are supposed to hold jelly in the center. And it's supposed to act as a cushion so you can kind of take a lot of impact when you walk for 100 years. Well, in the United States, 60 to 70 years. In other places of the world, 100 years because that's how long people live there. Now, even if you have arthritis and all of us get an arthritic condition or all of us get arthritic changes, once you hit 50, 60, and 70. Uh, one of my patients came in today saying, a doctor said, and she was 60 years old, doctor said, I have arthritis. And I mean, it's valid. It, a lot of people that hit 50, 60, and 70 will have arthritis. The question is, does that area that the doctors called arthritis, is that area bothering that person? So sometimes I've seen some orthopedic guys say, yeah, it's arthritic, that's what your problem is. And I, I disagree. I can have an elderly patient without any problems come in, I can x-ray their knees, and I guarantee you they'll have x-ray findings of severe degenerative joint disease, but they're not complaining and they're getting around okay. The question is, do we have to do that just to appease everybody? No. So some people, when, they have, when they're older and they have arthritis, they just happen to have a joint painful, and that's reasonable. Could be that it, the arthritis isn't helping, but it's probably the mechanics. Same thing with this little disc that separates all of these vertebral bodies. When they uh, take the pressure, good, because it's, like uh, uh, it's like a rubber tire. Very strong rubber tire, brand new, even low profile on some of these sports cars can take bumps. They can take hits. They're just really tough, the sidewalls. But some of the older tires from way back, like um, uh, there used to be a commercial called Uni Roy and Al, where these guys would turn their, they would ride their car on the side and uh, you'd see the undercarriage. It was kind of cool. Uniroyal was an old tire company. 
And uh, those tires, uh, I mean, they would bubble out on the side. I remember driving along my friend's jalopy in high school, and you see these bubbles on the side of his tires, just wondering, ooh, it's hot outside and it's really pushing out. Anyway, it has the fibers of this uh, annulosus fibrosus get thin, then you, you'll see the jelly in the center of this uh, disc push out to one side, and that's what that thing is here. And between the pressure, the high pressure of this disc, which is essentially the amount of weight of your thorax on this one area, with the amount of pressure to that disc, the, the, the war is going to be between the pressure of this disc and the delicacy of this nerve. And this nerve is very delicate. It's a brain tissue. Brain tissue doesn't like to be messed around with. So between the two, this brain tissue is going to lose. And what are you going to feel? Well, here's a cool thing. Well, it's not cool for you, but if you have uh, just the irritation to the outside of the nerve, you'll have numbness and tingling. The deeper you get into compressing in this, on this root, the deeper you get into irritation to the center of this thing, the more um, motor function and reflexes you lose. So if you completely cut this thing off, you won't feel anything, you won't be able to move the leg, and you'll have no reflexes. That's paralysis. But just as you start to irritate the outside, it's just numbness, tingling, shooting pain, neuropathy. So those are the warning signs, and sometimes just with a little bulging disc, you'll have that. So why am I saying all this? Well, trigger points are not necessarily pinched nerves, but they work the same way as far as irritation. So trigger points are more to like the trapezius muscle back here. Trigger points are... Not, are there impingement or irritation to the outer lining of that nerve, epineurium it's called, <clears throat> but they're not from discs in the back center of the actual skeleton. They're from where muscle travels across, uh, or nerve travels across muscle. Nerve can travel across muscle to get to its final destination, which is either the fingers or the toes. Nerve has to travel through trapezius, through the connective tissue surrounding trapezius, through the deltoids, through the muscles of the deltoids, and then the uh, humerus, or close to the humerus, down to the forearm, into the wrist. Uh, a lot of you will know a pinched nerve as being carpal tunnel syndrome. That's a pinched nerve. It just happens to be at the carpal tunnel, not at the disc. Uh, there's also something called double crush. I think I mentioned that in my previous video, where you put a little pinch up here, and you put a little pinch up here, and you have the manifestations without necessarily bad damage, but manifestations because you have double crush. Two crushes will be equal to one big crush. Kind of like if you have a long garden hose and you pinch it off aggressively at one end, you have the water hardly coming through. Well, you don't have to pinch that hard, but if you also pinch at the, the proximal portion of the hose, you'll still have no water coming through, just with a little bit of pressure but two spots. Anyway, this is how a trigger point works. So. I have my iPhone charger cable, right? Imagine this is going through muscle fiber, all right? This is the trapezius right here. And this is one of the roots that comes from the, the spinal cord, and this is where it goes to in the fingers. Now, if this trapezius muscle, this muscle here, is nice and supple, and it doesn't do anything to the iPhone charger cord, right? But if I start to pull on this muscle and it, and it becomes taut in either way, if it becomes taut, you can see it's already pulling on the cord the wrong way. So if it pulls on the cord the wrong way, it's going to shear the cord. It might not shear and break the cord, but it's certainly going to compress the cord. So this, mu this muscle doesn't care. It's going through spasm because it was tough all day. It was carrying stuff all day. It was typing all day. It was frustrated with computer, electronic, medical records all day. <clears throat> so uh, when that happens and you constantly do this, uh, or labor, obviously, uh, then this trapezius becomes worn. It becomes spasm. It tries to protect itself, so it spasms. And when it spasms, or I guess it can also happen if you overdo a workout. If you're doing a lot of uh, military presses or uh, cleaning presses or shoulder shrugs or lateral raises, if you're doing too much of that at, the, at one time and you're not ready for it because you're just 
they haven't worked out for a while and you're hitting all those trapezius muscles suddenly or the neck muscles suddenly, oh, here's one. When you do uh, neck, up, uh, neck extensions and neck flexions, I've seen some guys put these almost like a wrestling, this wrestling gear, headgear on, and it's connected to a five, 10 pound weight, and they try to get the neck ups. And usually it's wrestlers. Either there they do bridges. Uh, if you're not ready for it, that is a tremendous workout for the trapezius, but the trapezius sometimes doesn't like that. And then overnight, it's gonna spasm up and tell you, I didn't like those exercises you did. And while it's recovering, it stays in spasm. Well, you would think you'd be able to walk around a spasm. Well, you can't because these trapezius muscles are also going to be holding up and controlling movement to the arms. Whether you're driving, scratching, brushing your teeth, the arms have to be moved and that the trap is not uh, agreeing to that. You're going to have a lot of difficulty with your usual movement, even going around to wipe your butt. So it's not until you have a trap spasm and then the associated headache and neck pain uh, so, uh, you know I'm fibromyalgia. My trigger point's over here. If I let it go, and I'm about to go home after this long day, and hopefully get my concoctions ready, uh, if I let it go, I, I go into a full-blown fibromyalgia, headache, migraine, nausea, vomiting, gotta go to sleep, headache that lasts for a while. But I, can, I know my limitations. I'm gonna head home soon after this. Uh, but uh, when this gets pulled on, it interrupts the sensation or the function of this cord and I don't get a theoretical charge with my iPhone because it's being put under tension. Well, same thing happens with the nerve. The nerve won't necessarily work, uh, it won't uh, disconnect as far as muscle and grip strength because remember the center of the cord is where reflexes and motor strength arise and the outer side of the cord is where sensation arises. So muscle, when it's taut enough, is enough to just irritate the outer cord. And that's where the numbness, tingling come up. So if you have numbness and tingling in the trapezius, anywhere along this, it's called a brachial plexus, but anywhere along the brachial plexus, it can send pain down the back, it can send pain up the back, it can just be painful here. I've seen pain radiate around to the front too. You can also, if this is uh, damaged or dysfunctional long enough, you'll have the shoulder not work properly and your scapula will start snapping. I think I have a video of my son that I'll also put down on the link down below as far as a snapping scapula or scapular stability. It'll also ask this scapula and shoulder uh, to do more work because this guy's not working, even if you're right hand dominant. The, I, the, the gentleman that I saw uh, had uh, problems with this all up here. And it can happen. You can have sensation of referred pain up into the scalp. It'll mimic, uh, you will think, especially if you're old enough, it'll mimic a stroke. Uh, so you really have to get it taken care of. It can also radiate down the arm as far as numbness and tingling, wake you up middle of the night. Sometimes position change might help. So let's talk about some of the, the help. Well, if you have a pinched nerve, you unpinch the nerve and then the, ner the nerve comes back to functioning, right? If you don't do that, fast enough, the nerve will continue to die and you'll lose the center of the nerve and then you'll have motor uh, dysfunction. I put a couple things. The old video I have is on uh, trigger points releases with a Theracane and this is so awesome. I, le I, I learned about this back in the 90s with a, a massage therapy friend and a physical therapy friend and it works great, especially if you're solo, you can't afford going to a massage therapist. This is just fantastic. It hurts like hell, but it's a good hurt because you can apply the right amount of pressure to your trigger point and if you can overwhelm the trigger point then it will just loosen it's kind of like a charlie horse if you ever have a charlie horse you try to stretch the charlie horse muscle which is usually the calf and eventually the stretch will overwhelm the goal guy tendon organs and then you'll have the muscle relax so theracane is awesome or a tennis ball and laying against the wall and just pressure or somebody to apply pressure. I am also an acupuncturist uh, because of the constraints of my office and the time schedule. I'm supposed to see patients every 15 minutes, but I don't. It's usually until the problem is solved. And that sometimes takes, today it took like 45 minutes to an hour for everybody, but these are acupuncture needles. If I had my, well, one of these days I'll get back into it, but acupuncture needles are great. These are the long ones, you can put it in the back. And yes, you can put it all the way in through the hilt. 
and they're very fine. Uh, you can put a bunch of these, a bunch of these will fit into actually one hypodermic needle for blood drawing. These are great. You put this in the right spot, it just allows that trapezius muscle to soften like butter. Um, but you have to hit the right spot. It's called da chi. When the patient feels it and you feel a needle grab, you know you're in the right meridia. And these are meridias. If you can use Chinese medicine to hit this specific meridia, that will relax the meridia that's either needing past a tonification or help. Or you can do it American style and what's called dry needling. But dry needling is a little different. It's done by some physical therapist. It hurts a little bit uh, more aggressive than what the traditional Chinese medicine is doing for uh, meridias. But it does work, especially if you had a stubborn trapezius or even if you have trigger points down anywhere else. Uh, IT band, terrible trigger points. So uh, you can use it for other things. This is a very important instrument. It's used for skin scraping of uh, trapezius muscles, of low back. This is a soup spoon. And it's a Chinese soup spoon. And yes, you can use it for dishing out soup. But you can also use it for scraping the back. Gua Sha is a technique where you scrape the back and you hit a couple different trigger points at the same time and you keep on going. And you actually cause the patient to have black and blue everywhere. Uh, it's a technique that it, it's, it feels weird, but it works great if you know the right person that can do it. I always have my favorite, uh, this is capsaicin patch. This is just thin enough to put on my trigger point and it matches the size of my trigger point here. Just in case, I, I bring this in my travel bag because if I'm on an airplane and my neck is just killing me before I get to that point of migraine, I'll put this to my neck right here and then uh, all the capsaicin will start to hit, and this releases pepper. And pepper, or capsaicin, has been known to overwhelm the, the nerves of the, uh, the skin and the superficial uh, sensory nerves, so that, uh, I think they're called C-fibers, and it blocks, or it makes you think about burning more than pain, and you're distracted. Uh, pretty good. There's also essential oils. I like helichrysium, and then there's... I burn moxa, which is when you get the needles in and you stick a needle in and you burn moxa around it or you heat it up, there's an energy transfer. But the cool thing with this is it smells like and probably is marijuana. So every time I used to burn this in the clinic, I'd have to put a sign in front, burning moxa, because everybody would come in thinking, hmm, uh, and wouldn't you know it, now I certify for medical marijuana. Uh, this is a TENS unit, it can also be used to send electricity to the uh, needles of acupuncture and it causes a pulsation so again if it can overwhelm the muscle it'll eventually relax. That's what I was doing when I tore a rotator cuff. Um, I didn't want to have surgery so but my my shoulder was painful so I would put needles in sit in my bed and just jack up my, the the impulse to the muscles until it would be overwhelmed and it wouldn't hurt anymore. But I avoided surgery and I got full range of motion with enough uh, uh, power and striking ability to not have pain, but have fun with martial arts. So that is a uh, trigger point in a nutshell. I, I hope it was uh, revealing enough to tell you that even if you do have a disc that says it might be a cause for trigger point, please try to take care of this. Uh, uh, conservatively first. I mean, if you have weakness, uh, then no question. You might need, if there is a disc that's bulging out or degenerative joint disease, you might need surgery, a laminectomy. But here's the thing. If you're having symptoms over here and you take care of center, if you have surgery and you're lucky, then it helps. But if you have surgery and you're not lucky, it wasn't the real cause, you will have the old pain and you'll have to deal with surgery and stiffness because you just stiffened up your neck or your low back. So be very, very careful, go conservative, try to find alternative medicine doctors and uh, people who are gifted in traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture. Sometimes napropaths and certain chiropractors will also be able to help. You have to be careful. Again, I gave a story where my patient went to the wrong person in a chiropractor's office I have a chiropractor, and I think he works great. Got me through the Spartan run. Um, I haven't been to see him in a while, but I'm too busy with this office. So uh, hopefully it'll give you a couple of ideas. Go conservative. 
uh, get all the tests done if you can afford them. If you can't, still go conservative, but just remember, conservative means that it's not covered by insurance, and, and that's okay. And sometimes you have to pay. And so one of my patients today said, well, uh, doesn't medicine help pay for preventive care? And I said, no, it, it, it was terrible, but medicine is good for Band-Aid care and disease care, or, or disease maintenance. But if you want preventive medicine, you got to pay outside of your pocket to get a good, a good trainer, a good coach for counseling and calming, a good nutritionist, and usually they're the ones that don't take insurance. So, or you can read on your own like I do. I always empower my patients to read and watch the right videos. You have to be careful.